So welcome to the East Shore District Health Department TikTok. My name is Barbara Niclario. I am the health educator at the East Shore District Health Department, which means I try to keep people healthy. I go out and give talks on different subjects. And of course, in Connecticut, Lyme disease is always a thing. All right. So Lyme disease is a vector-borne disease, which means it's carried in animals and insects, and the insects bite us, and that's how we get Lyme disease. In the last 13 years, um, vector-borne diseases, uh, diseases from mosquitoes, ticks, and fleas have increased uh, a significant amount, almost three times in the last 13 years. So, um, and funding to fight these diseases has not increased one cent. Is that just from the United States? This is the United States. I would say probably yes. Um, the problem with ticks is they're very tiny. And it's a serious problem because we increasingly build our homes into territory where there's wild animals, and wild animals carry the ticks. Um, another problem is that in Connecticut, we have more trees per square mile than any other state. I didn't know if you knew that. So we have more forests, so the reforestation of our state is a problem with, you know, creating more habitat for wild animals, more habitat for the ticks. And as you can see on this slide, the adult female has a reddish body and it's the largest of the ticks. Um, so this is the black-legged tick, the deer tick that carries Lyme disease, and she's about the size of a poppy seed. The adult male's a little smaller, and he's all black. The nymph is even smaller, and you would not feel the nymph on yourself at all. Um, and the larva is even smaller than that but the larva will not give you Lyme disease. Then the problem with identifying ticks is if they get engorged with blood, they look completely different. <laughs> so you wouldn't be able to recognize them. But as a health department, I need to let you know that we allow, we have people bring in their ticks and we send them to the Connecticut Ag Station in New Haven and they identify the tick and they tell you whether it's carrying Lyme disease and three other diseases. So um, it's a good way to find out if the tick that bit you was carrying Lyme. Well, could we do that just for a tick you, you catch in your yard whether or not it bit you? Um, no. They want it to actually be engorged. Oh, okay. But um, they don't always look as big as that one there either <laughs> when they're engorged. Um, we don't take them from your animal, but we do take them from people. So the life cycle of the tick, eggs hatch in the spring and turn into larvae in the summer and by winter they become nymphs and then it takes about six months for it to turn into an adult and about six months for that adult to lay eggs again and die so they only live about two years which is long for an insect and they need a blood meal at every stage typically the larva um, will grab onto a small animal or hatch on a small animal. Um, 
They typically do not get their blood mail from humans. But every other stage, yes. In males and females. Now, why, why is uh, the bird and the because that that's who that's who the larva attached to. Yes. Yes. What does that mean? The robin is a reservoir. That means that the robin is some one that the if a tick bites it and has Lyme disease. Or if the robin has the Lyme disease bacteria in it, it will give it to the tick with its blood. It, it doesn't die of it. It doesn't die of it. It doesn't affect it. And I'll show you in another slide, but uh, there's a bunch of animals that carry Lyme disease, but it doesn't make them sick. So this is information from the Kinetic Ag Station. Um, as you can see, uh, it's by year, total amount of ticks that they identified, the total that they tested, um, and then the total that came up positive for Lyme disease. And last year, 38% of the ticks that they tested were positive for Lyme disease. So up a little bit. It's uh, something we need to be watching. Do you think that's because of climate change or is it getting warmer? So oh, absolutely. The is not, only, not only warmer, but more humid. Yeah. And humidity is everything. Tick, no, honestly, ticks will die if it's dry. Mm -hmm. But they need the moisture to live. more so than food. And this is a, just a picture of the United States. On the left is where Lyme disease was reported in 2001, and on the right where Lyme disease was reported in 2017. And if you have good eyes and you're looking at Massachusetts, you're probably wondering why there's white in Massachusetts. Any guess? They stopped reporting it. <laughs> they stopped reporting because they're like, we always have Lyme disease. So it is no longer a reportable disease in Massachusetts. Because we call it endemic, so it's endemic. And it's endemic here, but we like to keep an eye on what's coming in and what levels we're getting, like the 38% of positive ticks. That's important information. This year, it seems like I've seen a lot fewer ticks than last year. Is that something? Me too. Well, we had a lot last summer. Yeah. Yeah. Last summer. Which is why I was interested in seeing how much, what percentage were going to be positive for Lyme disease. But it cycles. It cycles. So, and you can see it here. This is, well, the Lyme disease cycles. <laughs> this is the amount of Lyme disease in 2011 to 2018 in our three towns. The blue is Branford, the purple is East Haven, and the pink is North Branford. So those were the cases in your town last year that were reported to the state. It's a reportable disease, but that doesn't mean everything gets reported. But the towns that have the most amount of water have the greatest amount of occurrence. Yeah. Whatever means that water, they have a lot of water. Yeah. Yep. Yep. According to the reports. Mm -hmm. And again, these are cases of people from those towns. They might not have picked it up in those towns. Mm -hmm. So that's always a bugaboo in our data. Um, I put this in here so you can see what month is typical of getting Lyme disease. June and July are usually our high months. But also I want you to notice December and January and February. Mm -hmm. Guess what? People are still getting Lyme disease. 
and the age groups that most commonly get Lyme disease, 60 to 69 and 70 and above. And then if you go down to the younger, the kids, it's a little higher also. So. It's because the middle group are working. <laughs> Do you I'm think? Not that I'm retired, I just appreciate that. Also, also, the retired group, what's happening to your immune system? Oh, yeah. It's starting right. to not work as well. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So I like to show this. These are all the famous people who have had Lyme disease. Ben Stiller, Alec Baldwin, Faith Hill, Avril Lavigne. And Chris Christofferson is this interesting uh, case because he got reported a couple years ago of having um, dementia and they thought he had Alzheimer's and he was in a facility and for he had some unrelated thing they started giving him antibiotics and he was getting better and they tested him he had had Lyme disease and he, that's why I tell people if people around you or yourself anybody starts having symptoms of dementia get tested for a lot of different things because it may not be what you think it is. Can they really test well for Lyme disease? We're getting to that. You're ahead of me. <laughs> so these are the tick-borne diseases in Connecticut. Lyme disease, babesiosis, anaplasmosis, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, and of course we had that one case of Powassan disease three years ago in a child who was three years old and survived fine. But those aren't the only diseases carried by ticks, but those are the common diseases here. If you were in another state, you might have to worry about heartland virus. Not many cases, but it's just point, take my point. We may see other diseases come about from these ticks. Heartland virus, and that's a virus, not a bacteria. And that's another thing to remember. These uh, diseases are caused by different agents. Rickettsia, is it, is it that? Rocky Mountain sp spotted is fever. Or is Lyme a bacteria? Lyme is a bacteria. So, do animals get Lyme disease? Dogs, horses, and cattle can get Lyme disease. White-tailed deer, chipmunks, mice, squirrels, possums, and raccoons also get infected, but don't get sick from the infection. So, those are the animals that will carry it around. I have seen a lot less chipmunks this year, and that may be why I'm seeing less ticks, but I'll tell you this, there are not less ticks coming into the health department. Yeah. Well, I see birds and wires which are not coming. <laughs> so I never thought about them. <laughs> and then we have the animals that eat ticks, uh, the guinea fowl, chickens, wild turkeys, and possums. So, but the FDA wants to tell you that getting a flock of chickens or getting a flock of guinea hens will not protect your yard from ticks. <laughs> this is the mouth of a tick, and that center part is the part that goes into you, and you can see it's serrated on the edges. And that's why it's so hard to get out of you. But it also releases a chemical so you don't feel anything. So Lyme disease is a bacteria. Um, and ticks like any part of your body, but their favorite parts are dark and moist. Groin, armpit, um, Scalp, if you've got a lot of hair, they like to be up behind your head. Um, and most cases of Lyme disease, it requires the tick to be on you for more than 24 hours to actually transfer Lyme disease. But I want to make you aware that the other diseases that ticks carry might take a lot less than 24 hours. 
So up there is a picture of the bacteria that causes Lyme disease. I could try to, try to pronounce that, but I might get it wrong. Borrelia burgdorferi. <laughs> um, and it can attack your nervous system, neuromuscular system, and circulatory system. Early symptoms is a rash, and a lot of times people say a bullseye rash, but I want you to look at those pictures up there, and all of those are Lyme disease rashes. So it's not necessarily going to look like a bullseye. It's going to be a rash, though. And it's my understanding where the majority of people don't actually get the rash, which kind of throws Well, 70 to 80% of people who have get Lyme disease get the rash. Oh. But they don't always recognize that it's a rash. You may not recognize a rash on the, in your armpit or your groin or your lower back or in your head. So it might not be as obvious. Um, it's warm, it's itchy, it's painful, it clears up. What? It's a very itchy. I think I think rashes are always itchy. <laughs> so I did I disagree. <laughs> um, this is the worst slide for me. Look at that person's knee. That's a person who has uh, arthritis from the uh, Lyme disease. Uh, later signs: you can get headaches and stiffness, rashes, arthritis. Bell's palsy happens in about 20 to 30 percent of the people who get Lyme disease. Um, so your face gets um, paralyzed, but it's it's temporary. Not always. Oh yeah, I do know. Yes, most times it's temporary. Intermittent pain, heart palpitations, dizziness, shortness of breath, inflammation in the brain and the spinal fluid. Uh, nerve pain, shooting pains, numbness and tingling, problems with short-term memory. And most of these happen in people who didn't get treated for the Lyme disease in a good amount of time. And remember that I said that because we're going to explain why people aren't getting treated. <laughs> okay, so this is, this is the important slide for you, Nancy. <laughs> If you get the Lyme disease blood test less than 30 days from getting that bite, it's only going to pick it up 29 to 40% of the time. If you get they pick it up if you get the test after 30 days, it's 87 to 97% effective. So, what happens? You get bit by a tick. You have a rash. You start, you, you know, you know, you're not feeling well, but you're not sure what it is. You go to your doctor. Did you get bit by a tick? I don't know. You know, you don't know. A lot of people don't know. He's not, he, he decides, well, we're, we'll, we'll do a blood test, but, you know, I'll, and I'll give you antibiotics for a couple days. So you go home, you take the antibiotics, you're feeling better. Couple days go by, they get the blood test, comes up negative. What happens? Stop taking an antibiotic. And then what happens to you? Then you start getting sick. So if you get the test too early, it can't detect the, the small amount of antibody in your body at that point. So. If you wait, so the other scenario, well, you got bit by a tick and it's more than 30 days, so I know the test will be good, but I'm really sick now, and now the bacteria has affected my knee and I have big arthritis in my knee, and I'm just, you know, everything's falling apart on me. Well, you waited so long to get antibiotics but the test comes up positive, <laughs> so it, it's, it's a tricky situation for the patient. It's a tricky p situation for the doctor.
So your test you really to be to get a true answer, you have to wait more than 30 days. However, you need treatment to get before that true recovery before your 30 days. Right. And there's also a difference too as far as where that line is test is sent. That is correct. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, some places are better than others. Right, and I know like they have recommended sending blood work, I believe it was to Yukon. Is that right? Mm -hmm. to Yukon. Yep. But then they have like um if, if they're really uncertain the gray area, they've got black symptoms, they're not supposed to be positive, they will send it to California for a more inclusive test. Mm-hmm. So it <sighs> We, this is our recommendation to people and to their doctors. If you know you've been bitten by a tick and you're starting to have symptoms, you're starting to have the rash, you're starting to feel like you have the flu, they should put you on antibiotics for at least the three week period that you need to be on antibiotics. Um, I think it's doxy, doxycycline. It is. Still is. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. It's still doxycycline, which is a pain in the butt if you take that because you can't go out in the sun, right? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you don't want to be taking antibiotics if you don't need them. But if we don't have a test that works properly, we recommend that people, you know, get get on the antibiotics which is why it's also important that you get the tick tested right because you'll get the results back from the tick before 30 days which it would take for you you to turn zero positive against the lyme disease so it's important to get the tick tested is there any point where let's say you've been going to doctors off and on for five years mm -hmm. Yes, we'll come up positive. Yes. And you say, please test me for Lyme disease. Especially if you've got a lot of those um, symptoms. They're really nondescript because they could be anything. Yeah. A lot of your autoimmune diseases fall into that. You have symptoms, right. but you're not testing positive. Right. Most physicians that have extensive work for autoimmune will treat the symptoms rather than the test result because even if people are rheumatoid arthritis that do not test positive right. that they are symptomatic. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Now what, what uh, would you suggest going to a specialist? If, or, or uh, well this is what I suggest to people. If, you're, if you think you have Lyme disease and your doctor is not testing you because you know there's that camp of doctors go to somebody else. We live in, we're so lucky, we live in an area of the country with so much medical care that you're able to do that. So see somebody who will treat you. So your primary care physician, you think? Your primary care, 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 yeah, yep, yep. I would hope. Which, which specialist would, would be an infectious disease? Infectious disease or internal medicine. Yeah. So this is babesiosis, and that's actually a parasite that will live in your red blood cells. Fun. So that's another disease that has shown up in um, Connecticut. And a lot of people end up with multiple diseases. They'll have Lyme disease and babesiosis, you know. But again, a lot of nondescript symptoms, fever, sweats, muscle and joint aches, um, but they do have a blood test checking under the microscope that you might have um, blood cells that are breaking down. But that's another anaplasmosis or HGE is what it, they used to call it is another disease carried by ticks and it's carried by a different bacteria and it attacks um, your white blood cells and lives in your white blood cells. And again, fever, shaking, chills, muscle joint pain, severe headache, could be anything. Our 
are there vaccines? I always get asked this question. Um, there was a vaccine 15, 20 years ago. They were testing it on people. It was making people sick, so they took it off. They stopped testing it. Um, Work. <laughs> if, you, if you were in that group of people who got the Lyme disease vaccine, you are not immune to Lyme disease. Um, and there's really no available vaccines right now. There are for animals, but not for humans. But I can tell you as a person who has an inside scoop on this stuff that certain entities are working on a vaccine, including the uh, government because so many servicemen and women are getting Lyme disease. So the best thing we can do is protect ourselves. I love a little white-footed mouse up in the right-hand corner that uh, is the main culprit of carrying around Lyme disease. But they like the shady places in your yard, and that's because it's more moist there, because they won't dry out in the shade. Um, moist, humid environments in grass or in woody areas, um, rock walls, log piles, any of those places where the little rodents live, that's where a lot of people pick up ticks. Ticks do not fall from trees. <laughs> they live in or above, just about eight to 12 inches above the ground because that's where most of their hosts live, is down there. The th reason people think they fall for trees, they can crawl from your sock line to your head in less than 10 minutes without you knowing. So they don't jump, they're low to the ground, And see the tick on the right-hand side there on the grass? That's where they sit. And they're waiting for a host to brush past them that they can grab onto a human being. So BLAST is a program to teach people how to protect themselves from ticks. B stands for bathing or showering as soon as you come in from outdoors. A loofah or a wet face cloth on the skin can wipe that tick right off before it puts its head into you. So that's always a good thing. Within two hours of coming in, you should take a bath or a shower. L, look for the ticks and rashes. So a lot of people don't know they have Lyme disease because they never found a tick or never saw the tick. Um, my husband and I do a lot of gardening. When we come in, we do a tick check. I check the back of his neck, he checks the back of my neck. Hold up your arms, you know. Um, when I was in Pennsylvania at a Lyme disease national conference this spring, um, one of the health departments had what they, stickers for people to hang up in their bathroom, which were toilet check. <laughs> so while you're on the toilet, check yourself for ticks. <laughs> Just an idea. Um, if your kids play outside, if they're at camp, check them when they get home. Um, again, those are the same things I already said, which is make sure you look in all the nooks and crannies and use a washcloth, take a shower. L for, or A for apply repellents. Um, so for your skin, the best thing is DEET. DEET has been shown to not be harmful. I am someone who doesn't like putting chemicals on my body, um, so I'm very 
cautious with how much DEET or anything else I put on. Um, on your clothing, you can use permethrin, and that's a product you can just spray on your clothes, and it actually will stay on your clothes through three or four washes in the um, wash machine. The thing to remember with permethrin is it could be harmful to your small animals in your house. Mm -hmm. So DEET is safe on human skin and may be applied on clothes too. So that's what I do. I spray it on my clothes. Um, but it'll come off in the wash. The problem is it, it might discolor your clothes. I don't care because they're my gardening clothes. So um, make sure you buy the level, the amount that repels ticks, not just mosquitoes. Uh, proven to work most effectively as a tick repellent and it's commercially available as off deep woods and Ben's wipes. Permethrin comes from the chrysanthemum. Thank you very much. See, you were way ahead of me. Um, it's the most popular brand. It is not effective if you put it on your skin, but it's effective on your clothes. Um, it can be deadly. Excuse me. Um, if you plant chrysanthemum, does it have any positive effects? On I don't. Plants? I don't know. I mean, I I generally plant um, like the repelling mosquito plant, which is a it's in the family of the chrysanthemum. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to think a citronella plant. Yeah, but you know something that actually doesn't do anything. Ah, well, it sits on my deck. It gives, yeah, it gives you. Mental health thinking, something like that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but permethrin is poisonous. Yeah. Maybe they might know. And nature works with chrysanthemums. Yeah. I would think it does, but I, I don't know, you know, unless you wore one on your lapel. No, I didn't plan I, I know. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> but the, the permethrin is deadly to cats, aquatics, uh, fish, insects, and bees. So that's where you have to be careful. You know, I would think if you had cats and you're a hiker and like to camp, then you would spray your stuff well away from your animals and keep let those clothes dry well away from your animals. And then you can wear them when you go camping when you're not carrying a cat in a backpack or something. So does that mean that children? I don't think children should be near it. That is, <laughs> I think it's a big red flag when it says poisonous to cats. <laughs> Do you have anything on cedar oil? So, herbal repellents. <laughs> um, so, the first thing I want to say is just because it's natural doesn't mean it's safe. You know, arsenic is natural but it'll kill you. <laughs> chrysanthemums are natural, but I don't eat chrysanthemums. Yeah. Um, you gotta carefully read the instructions no matter what you're using, but the lemon and eucalyptus is prob probably your best bet. Mm -hmm. I don't know about cedar. Yeah. I, I, I just reading about that recently. Huh? I started using um, yeah. yeah. Um, Again, I'm, I'm more of a natural girl, and I don't want yeah. a lot of chemical on my body. Yeah. Um, well, it's to use, the one I've done is <clears throat> you attach a nozzle to your cold uh -huh. when you're spraying around your house. Yeah. Mm. It smells like forest after you've done it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just. Being part of that body, they did talk to everybody about the non toxic product that they come out and they spray. Not just your grass, mm -hmm. but your home, the outdoor furniture. See, out there. Yeah. And, and we're still on apply A and haven't gotten to S, which is spray. 
<laughs> you guys are way ahead of me. But there is a website you can go to, and the EPA website, it has insect repellent, repellent, find repellent that's right for you. And you can put in, do I have kids? Do I have pets? Do I go hiking? All those different things. And it will tell you what's the best repellent for you to use. And I think that's very handy. A is for spray. If you're going to spray your yard, hire a licensed professional who's trained to do his job efficiently and safely. That's the best bet with that. Um, a perimeter spray, you should only do this once or twice a year. And once should be in the spring, early spring, when there are little nymphs. And what chemical is that? I, you got me. The professional. Health. The professional. Talk to the professional. <laughs> and again, you could talk to them about, like, what are you using? What is this harmful to? I think most of the product they use is, like, an oil base. Yeah. Dead cedar well. And I think part of that is the oil, because of the, because of the right. oil, it might kill a dead because they can no longer, like, breathe. Mm, I don't know. Well, they say to spray it once and then again seven to ten days later to get the life cycle. And then oh. every four to six weeks. <laughs> Well, they, the state recommends twice. Yeah. Um, and basically, you have to work with your neighborhood and your family and decide what's right for you. This is a way to landscape your yard so that you have less ticks coming into your yard, where you have a wood chip barrier, a three-foot barrier, all the way around your yard. And just think, you don't have to mow there. <laughs> <laughs> but it keeps it's it's a way to keep the little animals away from your lawn. So you're saying three feet perimeter of your yard should be wood chips? Yep. Cedar? Uh, um, if you don't have cedar, you're gonna end up with um, termites. Yeah. Wood chips or rock. Or, you know, that fake yeah. stuff you can put down. They have a lot of information on this on the Connecticut Ag Station website. I just wanted to show this because this is a good picture. Risky for ticks? Tick safe. But if you have an animal, guess what? All bets are off. Yeah. <laughs> Because T is treat your pets. So not just giving them treats, but get them treated. Um, check your pick, pet for ticks after it comes indoors. Ask your vet to give them a vaccine. Or now, like, my daughter has a dog and he gets a pill um, every couple months or so. And it keeps ticks off. Um, and don't sleep with your pet. And I say that jokingly because almost everybody I know who has a pet sleeps with their pet. Can you go back to the previous slide? Sure. I was just, I was reading the top there. Uh, wood piles attract rodents. Mice and primary culp are the primary culprit for producing infected ticks. The separation between two risky, tick risky and tick safe zones on your property can be a single step. So if you don't have those, that wood chip order, you could just, you know, if you have a large yard, you just kind of make, make sure you, that. right, you make sure you don't have the pile of leaves there that, that people walk through and bring into the yard. Make sure that, you know, you're not, like, we always have a wood pile because my husband yeah, goes camping. <laughs> but make sure it's not too big. Yeah. <laughs> make sure there's not little animals living in it. Yeah, when you come in, remove your clothes, tumble them in the dryer on high heat for an hour to kill remaining ticks, bathe or shower, 
two hours. Yep. High heat in the yeah. Put your clothes in the, in the dryer. High heat. If if you wash them first, they have to go an hour and a half in the high heat because you've already you cooled down your your dryer, right? Um, do a tick check. Yeah, okay. But that was a couple years ago. They're saying an hour. And again, it's more about drying out the tick than anything else. Um, find and remove ticks off your body. Check under your arms, your ears, inside your belly button, but behind your knees, your legs, around your waist, and especially in your hair. Um, examine your gear and pets, and carefully examine your pets' coats and day packs, especially if you're a hiker. And this is how to properly remove a tick. You want to grab it with tweezers near the head area and pull. Do not squeeze on the body part of the tick because what will happen? All the stuff inside the tick will go into your body. They also have a little, I got it from like that, a little gadget, a tick remover. Yep, yep. Those work really well. Well, yeah, you can you can get specialized equipment. <laughs> Do not use for folklore memori- re- remedies such as painting the tick with nail polish or petroleum jelly. That does not work. Um, they can hold their breath for a long time. <sighs> Um, do not try to burn off a tick or use heat to detect a tick from your skin. We've had a few people come into the health department with a tick and a burn. Oh, I used a match. Um, do not squeeze the tick. Do not wait for it to detach. Bring the tick to the health department in a baggie. Um, we charge $5 for handling because we have to mail it to the ag station when it comes back. We get the results and we call you. Um, they test the, the tick for Lyme, babesiosis, and anaplasmosis. And we call you with the results. Uh, but if you have symptoms in that time period, you should see your doctor. What about um, using a piece of tape? Like stick to a tick. So right. Well, if you do that, you bring it to the health department, we have to take it off the tape and put it in the baggie. Yeah. Oh. We, we, no, no. Oh. We've had them in tissues. We've had them, oh. you know. But if, they get, but if they get crushed, we can't guarantee that they're going to get tested. Right. We've also had people bring in scabs off their skin, thinking it's a tick. Oh. We, we have all sorts of... Yeah, yeah interesting things that come in. Lyme disease myths. You will not contract Lyme disease from person-to-person contact. Touching, kissing, or having sex with somebody who has Lyme disease will not give you Lyme disease. You will not contract Lyme disease from breast milk. You will not contract Lyme disease from dogs and cats, although Dogs and cats can carry in the ticks that can get on you and give you Lyme disease. But if you have a dog who has Lyme disease and he licks you, you're not going to get Lyme disease. You will not contract Lyme disease from eating venison or squirrel meat. Um, they may have carried the tick, but and if the tick is on them and you're field dressing them and the tick jumps from their fur to you, well, that's one thing. Then you get Lyme disease from the tick. But you're not going to get it from the meat. And you will not contract Lyme disease from air, food, water, from the bites of mosquitoes, flies, fleas, or lice. So I want to give you a little buzz on mosquitoes. Everybody knows what a mosquito is. Um, annoying and they feed on the blood of mammals and disease transmission makes them the deadliest animal on the planet. The life cycle as an adult who lays eggs 
in the water, the eggs turn into larvae, in the water, the larvae turn to pupa, in the water, and then they hatch and come out into the air. The eggs to adult is about seven to 10 days. There's some larva in the water. And there's an adult coming out of the pupa. Can you back up? I didn't see the larva in the water. Oh, all those little black things. <laughs> so, um, Females live for about one to two weeks. Um, and only the female mosquitoes bite. Um, we call it the world's deadliest animal because they carry so many diseases. But up here, one of the things we worry about is West Nile virus. My health director's wife contracted West Nile virus last year. Yeah, she was very, very sick with encephalitis. And he said, test her, test her, test her. They finally tested her for West Nile virus, and she had it. And she has um, underlying uh, health, health issues. So she's taking drugs that reduce her immune system, got bit by a tick, or bit by a mosquito carrying West Nile virus. And that's what she got. And let me tell you, they're still, dealing, still dealing with the consequences of that disease. 80% um, of people bitten or exposed have no symptoms at all. So chances are you've been bitten by a mosquito that carries West Nile virus. So does that mean that most of us have antibodies? Yep. Virus? Yep. Is there a for that? I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, you could build a tighter kit to anything, but I don't think they test regularly for that. 20% um, of people have mild symptoms. 1% of people who get bit by a mosquito carrying Lyme disease actually get seriously ill. But when they do get ill, some people die. Other people have neuro neurological diseases. Um, and some people have symptoms that last the rest of their life from this including not being able to walk, not being able to talk, not knowing who you are. This is the cases in Connecticut from 2000 to 2018. So you see last year there were 23 cases. And do I think this is related to climate change? Absolutely. Absolutely. Another thing we worry about is triple E, Eastern equine encephalitis. It's rare but serious. Um, aver we average about five cases in the whole United States every year. Um, it appears three to 10 days after being bitten, and the symptoms include high fever, stiff neck, headache, lack of energy. Hmm, another one of those. Are they gonna test you for this? Maybe if you ask. Prevention, inside make sure you have screens. Try to have air conditioning in your house. Um, and if you're very worried and you got holes in your screens, you can put mosquito netting around your bed. We always tell people remove the standing water in your yard. And the reason why is because all the larvae live in tires, a little bit of water. You only need a half quarter cup of water and mosquitoes can lay eggs in it. Flower pots, bird baths, clean out the water. You know, it's great to have a bird bath and it's great for the birds, but clean out the water every day. Wading pools for kids, again, same thing. Just keep, you know, if you're gonna have those things, make sure you change the water. Using insect repellent, and I'll tell you the same thing I said before, DEET is probably the best thing, but if you have certain concerns, you can go on the EPA website and it will find the best repellent for you. Um, these are from the 
CDC, what they, re they recommend for the best DEET repellent is off deep woods, best DEET based for repellent for kids is repel, best non-DEET based repellent for sensitive skin is Sawyer picaridin insect repellent, and best non-DEET repellent is lemon eucalyptus. With kids, never, never spray them in the face with, or their hands with insect repellent because their hands are always going in their mouths. So the best thing for you to do is spray some in your hand, put it on their face, put it on their arms. Um, personal clothing, long sleeves, Everybody's seen the picture of the guy with the pants, with the socks rolled over the pants. And uh, I saw this on the internet. Please send this warning to everybody on your email list. If someone comes to your front door saying they're checking for ticks due to warm weather, ask, and they ask you to take your clothes off and dance around with your arms up, don't do it. It's a scam. <laughs> They only want to see you dance naked. I wish I got this yesterday. <laughs> so that's the whole presentation. You're welcome.